everyone. It's that time. Let's get up, get off your beds. Let's clap and have some fun. Dance with us. Sing with us. It's time to worship with Matt. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. Hello and happy Easter. I am so excited that you're here with me today. This is such an exciting time and I have missed all of you. I am Jody, the director of Kids Ministries here at Crossroads and this is such an exciting season to be celebrating and I'm glad you're here today. All right, so I don't know what your day has looked like so far. You may have been eating chocolate eggs. You may have been visited by the Easter Bunny. I have no idea, but let me tell you, there is so much going on with this season. You know, they have holidays for everything. Do you know that? Holidays for everything, even donuts. Donuts have their own holidays. I know the, the other day it was pet holiday. Bring your, bring your pet out on this holiday. I don't know, but we're not talking about those holidays. We're talking about this day this very, very important day. Do you know what today is? Today is Easter, and that is an amazing time, my friends, and we're gonna celebrate that together. We've got a story lined up for you, and I know you're gonna love it. Let's get to that story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapters 18 through 20. For months, the Jewish religious leaders had been making plans to silence Jesus. The things he said and did challenged the way they had always lived. He was upsetting the world as they knew it. It is better if one man dies for the people than if the whole nation is destroyed. Then one of Jesus' closest friends, Judas, betrayed to the religious leaders where Jesus would be praying after the Passover meal. The leaders sent soldiers to arrest Jesus, and he allowed the mob to take him. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of angels. But then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. As Jesus was tied up and led away, Jesus' closest friends scattered, though Peter and John followed at a distance. What was it like for them? Try to imagine for a minute that you're Peter. Only hours before, Jesus told you. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. And you, Peter, protested that you would die before deserting. But now Jesus has been arrested, and if you get too close, they might take you too. So you trail along like a stray dog as soldiers haul Jesus inside the home of the high priest. What's happening in there? The servant at the door frowns as she peers at you. You aren't one of Jesus' disciples, are you? I am not. You're ashamed to lie. But what good will you be to Jesus if you get arrested too? You huddle close to the fire in the courtyard as voices float through a high up window. What's this foolishness you've been teaching? I didn't say anything in secret. Ask the people who heard me. They certainly know what I said. You feel sick. Now they've taken Jesus. You know nothing will stop them. Someone else asks whether you're one of Jesus' followers and you snap. 
No, I'm not. Minutes later, another man asks whether he saw you in Gethsemane with Jesus. Your stomach churns. Nope, not me. You realize you have denied Jesus three times, just as he said, and all you can do is stagger to your feet and run away, weeping. Now, imagine you're John instead of Peter. Somewhere in the chaos, you've lost Peter. So when soldiers haul Jesus away to the Roman governor, all you can do is follow, alone. From the back of the crowd, you witness the terrible drama as the governor Pilate brings Jesus out. What charges are you bringing against this man? He has committed crimes. Pilate takes Jesus away for questioning. You can only pray that he sees through all the lies and stops this madness. You're horrified when Pilate brought Jesus out again, battered and bruised. I find no basis for a charge against him. No, crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate hands Jesus over to the soldiers who force him to carry the heavy beams of his own rough cross. You know where they are going. Golgotha. It's a hill outside the city. As in a bad dream, you force yourself to follow. Along the dusty road, you find Jesus' mother, Mary, her sister, and Mary Magdalene. None of you can speak. You arrive at Golgotha in time to see soldiers nail Jesus to the wooden bars with heavy spikes and raise the cross up high. You strain your eyes to read the sign placed above Jesus' head. King of the Jews. You nearly choke on dust and grit. You've seen Jesus do amazing, powerful things, and yet he's allowed himself to be taken and battered. You glance over and see Mary sobbing, so you place your hand on her shoulder. When you look back up, you see Jesus watching his mother through the pain in his eyes. Dear woman, here is your son. Jesus looks directly at you, eyes filled with love. Here is your mother. Yes, Lord. You are overwhelmed to know that Jesus trusts you to take care of his own mother. But the terrible truth sinks in. Jesus knows that he will die. He's planning on it, just as he's been saying for weeks. A short time later, you see him lift his gaze to heaven. It is finished. Then he bows his head, and you can see the life leave his body. All the air seems to leave your own lungs, too. You thought Jesus was God's chosen one. How could he be dead? Now, as we move ahead, imagine you're Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' close followers. Unlike so many others, you've dared to stay there, at the cross. And once Jesus is dead, you dare to follow the men who take his body for burial, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. A garden tomb. The evening has faded, and it's now the Sabbath. You want to honor Jesus by anointing his body with spices, but it will have to wait until the Sabbath is over. So you stay hidden indoors until early Sunday morning, then you make your way through the dark streets. The stone. What will I do about the stone? As you arrive, you recall that a heavy stone was rolled to block the entrance of the tomb, but now... It's gone! You gasp as you peer inside the tomb. Gray light reveals. <gasps> it's empty! Heart pounding, you race back through the streets to the home where the disciples are staying. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. You can see the shock in Peter's face. John gapes, and then they both begin to run to see for themselves. At a loss, you follow slowly, weighed down with exhaustion and confusion. When you reach the garden, you see Peter and John ahead, trying to make sense of it. You hang back as they leave again. What more is there to say? As the first rays of dawn light up the garden, you reach the tomb. Tears spill down your face as you bend to look inside once more. Two figures in radiant white sit where Jesus' body lay. You can't even begin to think what this means. Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away. 
I don't know where they've put him. You turn away to catch your breath and find another man standing right there. At first you think Peter or John has returned, but it's not one of them. Maybe it's a gardener. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Sir, did you carry him away? Tell me where you put him, then I will go and get him. Mary. The moment he speaks your name, you see, you understand. It's Jesus. Teacher! You fling yourself at his feet because there isn't anything else you can do. Gently, he touches your shoulder. Do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. You rise to your feet, still weeping but your tears are full of joy. You start to run again because you can't wait one second more to deliver the news. I have seen the Lord. Jesus chose to face death for those he loved and now he's defeated it. Jesus is alive. It's the best news ever for everyone across all time. Wasn't that a beautiful story? I gotta tell you guys, I'm just so glad that you are with me today. You know, I have missed you and we may not be together. We're going through some kind of crazy times right now and you may be feeling all sorts of things, right? But here's the deal. We're always together through Jesus. Jesus is always here for us and that's the coolest thing of all. And you, you heard that story. They were talking about love, sacrifice, friendship, redemption. And I wanna talk a little bit more about that with you. Because no matter what, Jesus is here for you. And we love you. And we are just so, gl so glad that you're with us today. So let's talk a little bit about this. I've got it right here. The first one I said, if you remember, you remember? I talked about love. Jesus loved the world so much that he laid down his life for us. He would not have come to earth unless he loved us so much. While we may, be do we may do things that might make his heart a little sad, there's nothing that we can do to lose his love. There's nothing. His love is greater than any other love that we know. And that is good news, right? Right, Pastor Sam? All right, the second one we talked about was sacrifice. Sacrifice, you guys, you heard about it. While Jesus could have come to earth to live as a king, he could have come here as a king, he chose to live a very simple life. He came as a baby. He didn't even have any clothes. And the entire reason that Jesus came here was for us. He came here for you. That is amazing. He came to die on the cross for us. Why? Because he loved us so much. All right, who remembers the third one? Third one we talked about. Friendship. All of us, all of you out there, such good friends. We. We love the fact that you're here with us today because we might not be here physically together and that's probably not gonna happen for a while, but the cool part is we're gonna be joining you every week. So let's talk about friendship since we're all such good friends. Jesus was the ultimate, the ultimate friend. He loved his own friends even when they were horribly mean to him. Pretty cool. When they lied about him and hurt him, he still loved them. Jesus also spent lots of time with them. And before Jesus died on the cross, one of the most important things that he did is he ate with them, with a special group of friends called the disciples. And the last one, my friends, is redemption. The purpose of Jesus coming to die on the cross for all of us is so that we could live with him in heaven. He didn't have to come. He didn't have to die. He did it because he loves us and he wants to spend eternity with us, with you, because Jesus loves you and we love you. And we're just so happy that you're with us. All right, now we have something really special. A good friend of mine is coming here to talk with you. You might recognize him. He's that guy that is hanging out in the big church with all of your parents while you guys are with moi. But he's going to come. He's going to talk with you guys. He's, he has a very spe special, special message just for you. Check it out. Hey, thanks, Miss Jody. 
Hey, boys and girls, I'm so stoked to be able to talk to you. I know usually I'm with your parents, and we're talking about Jesus. And I know this morning you have been hearing about the person of Jesus. And I'm so excited that you're learning and you're growing, and especially on Easter Sunday morning where you're hearing the good news about Jesus, that he conquered death and he rose from the grave. Hey, the Bible says this, and it's Jesus talking. He says in John 3, 16, maybe you want to commit it to memory. Maybe you want to memorize it so that you can have it deep down in your heart. It says this in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that's you, for God so loved us that He gave His only Son, that whosoever, any of us, who would believe in Him would have everlasting life. I want to talk to you for a moment about belief. See, belief drives our behavior. See, if you believe that cookies are good, it will drive you to steal some from the cookie jar, right? If, if you believe that mom and dad love you, you will run after them and you'll wrap your arms around them because it's your belief that drives your behavior. See, boys and girls, it's really important about what you believe about Jesus. See, this morning you've heard that Jesus came and lived and he died, but he rose from the grave. And that's what this whole Easter holiday is really all about, is believing that. Believing that Jesus changes everything. He changes how we think about ourselves, knowing that we're loved. He changes how we think about our friends and our family, knowing that if God loves us, then we are to love others. So I want to encourage you with that today. I want to encourage you to believe in the person of Jesus, that he fundamentally changes life and death and love and goodness and truth. And these words like grace, which is forgiveness. So hey, boys and girls, I want to pray with you. I want to lead you in a prayer. I want to help introduce you to the person of Jesus because Jesus is with us. His Spirit lives in us and works through us, and He helps us to love others. So I want to pray with you this morning. If you say, Pastor Sam, I want to believe that Jesus died and rose again and that He changes my life completely, that if I believe in Him, He makes life look different. If that's you today, I want you to say this very simple prayer with me. I want you to say this, Lord Jesus, I love you, but I love you because you first loved me. Thank you for living and dying for me so that I could be raised to new life. Help me to believe so that my behavior will be different. Help me to believe so that my behavior will look like Jesus. Boys and girls, I'm so glad that you joined us today. I'm praying for you. I want you to tell your mom and dad about your prayer and how you believe in Jesus and that you want life to look different because he loves you. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Pastor Sam. That was awesome to hear from you. And hey, guys, again, I am so glad you're here. Happy Easter. I hope you had an amazing time with us. I'm looking forward to seeing you again very, very soon. So have a wonderful day with your family. Much love. Take care.